World War I left us with many developments, and many more shadows. Blood banks, stainless steel, even zips were all invented to solve the many problems faced during the conflict. The other side of the coin brought machine guns, tanks, and chemical weapons. New and terrifying methods for killing en masse. Yeah, there are examples of chemical warfare dating back before World War I. Poisoned arrows, bellows of arsenic fumes, and burning sulfur and bitumen to suffocate Roman soldiers barricaded in tunnels. However, World War I is when chemical weapons really took off, and nations across the globe entered a race to develop, produce, and weaponize the most deadly compounds possible. Since then, more than 700,000 tons of chemical weapons have been produced including the horrific nerve agent VX. VX, short for Venomous Agent X, is a chemical compound capable of killing a person just by it touching their skin. As humans seem intent on becoming the masters of our own demise, it probably won't surprise you that VX is not found in nature, it's entirely man-made. It belongs to a group of synthesized chemical compounds known as nerve agents. And yeah, there's a whole group of them. Why stop at one when you could create more than 10 nightmarish ways to kill thousands of people? The majority of nerve agents are organophosphates, mixtures of phosphorus, carbon, and other elements. Unfortunately, as they're such simple compounds, they're easy to make and can be manufactured in fairly ordinary factories. The only known uses for them are as insecticides, if weak enough, or nerve agents if more potent. The nerve agent VX is an oily, amber-colored liquid. It's odorless and tasteless, making it difficult for victims to detect until the symptoms begin. If you've seen the 1996 film The Rock, you might imagine VX to be a bright green liquid that immediately aerosolizes, causing the skin to bubble and blister before the victim's face melts off. The reality is very different, but it's still equally brutal. After exposure, symptoms will appear within hours, but in large doses, it can start in seconds, just like in the film. Victims may first feel as if they've got a severe cold or flu. They'll develop a headache, cough, runny nose, watery eyes. As their condition worsens, they might suffer vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, drooling, confusion, tightness of chest, abnormal heart rate, high or low blood pressure, and constricted pupils. Finally, they'll begin convulsing and experience paralysis leading to respiratory failure. The final cause of death is asphyxiation as the lungs are paralyzed. VX does this by preventing the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, ACHE, from working properly. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter responsible for transmitting nerve impulses across synapses. It causes muscles to contract. ACHE is the enzyme that breaks it down and lets the muscles relax. When VX stops the ACHE working, the synapses become flooded with acetylcholine and the muscles never get the signal to relax. Imagine every muscle contracting all over your body at once. You'd jerk, twist, and convulse. But more fatally, your ribcage would expand, filling your lungs. As they'd never received the signal to relax, you'd die of suffocation due to being unable to breathe out. You can be exposed to VX through the skin, eye contact, inhalation, or by consuming contaminated food or water. This means someone could drip some onto you, spray you with it, or put it in your meal. Unfortunately, it's so toxic that this would pose a huge risk to your poisoner, and so it is not attempted very often. The only antidote is atropine, administered directly into the thigh or heart. It unlocks the muscles and allows them to relax. Further doses of the drug pralidoxime should also be given to return the cells to normal function. However, treatment must be immediate and requires a hypodermic needle, not something that most people carry around. If you're exposed to a high enough dose, you're likely to asphyxiate before medical staff have even figured out what's happening to you. Nerve agents were first invented in Germany in 1936 by Gerhard Schroeder. He was attempting to find a new insecticide that would be cheaper than nicotine. Unfortunately for everyone, he was too successful and created a compound far too deadly to be used as an insecticide. It was so toxic that when one drop was spilt in the lab, Schroeder and his assistant were unable to work for three weeks. This would become the first nerve agent in the Germany series or G series. They called it Taben. When World War II broke out, Germany took the awful yet predictable decision to start mass producing it. Through this work, advancements were made and more G-series nerve agents were discovered, including sarin, somin, and cyclosarin. 
After World War II, research into pesticides continued, and regrettably, it was put into the hand of another overachiever, Ranajit Ghosh. In 1952, Ghosh was working at Imperial Chemical Industries in the UK. He created a new insecticide, Amaton, which showed incredible success in killing lice on plants. It was patented and actually put on the market for use in agriculture before they discovered that it was incredibly toxic to humans. It was withdrawn and renamed Agent VG, the first in the V series of nerve agents. During the 1950s, Britain had been phasing out its work into chemical weapons. However, the development of VG sparked interest, and samples were sent to Porton Down, a facility in England researching chemical weapons. Just as in Germany, they were unsatisfied with the deadliness of VG, so they worked harder to discover other, more toxic members of the V series, and Venomous Agent X, or VX, was created. So, why was everyone so hell bent on creating the nastiest nerve agent possible? Well, that would be the Cold War. Between 1947 and 1991, the struggle for world dominance between the US, the Soviet Union, and their respective allies gripped the world. The race to develop nuclear weapons terrified both sides and occupied the nightmares of many. However, there was a second, equally high-stakes arms race being run in secret chemical weapons. The winner would have the power to kill vast numbers of people in horrific ways. They could control the loser through fear of chemical attacks just as effectively as nuclear. This race led to the final series of nerve agents being developed during the 1970s and 80s in the Soviet Union. They're known as the Novichok series, or N series, and estimated to be between five and ten times more deadly than VX. They're now infamous for use in the poisonings of Ivan Kividlidi and Zara Izmailova in Moscow in 1995, Sergei and Yulia Skripal in Salisbury, England in 2018, and Alexei Navalny on a flight to Moscow in 2020. Several nations have alleged that these attacks were made by Russian agents. Fortunately, Novichok was never deployed on a large scale during the Cold War, and many would argue this was due to a fear of a counterattack. Britain maintains that its interest in the V-series of nerve agents was not purely offensive. They knew that scientists in both Germany and the Soviet Union were working on the compounds and wanted to develop countermeasures. In 1958, the medical division at Port and Down were trying to measure the toxicity of the V-series nerve agents. They began campaigning for permission to inject humans with diluted V-agents. However, they were met with extreme resistance from the British government, who rightfully feared for the safety of participants. You see, in 1953, aircraftsman Ron Ronald Madison agreed to take part in a trial assessing the toxicity of sarin. 200 milligrams of the compound was dripped onto his arm through two layers of clothing. Tragically, he fell unconscious, and within half an hour, he was dead. Where was this experiment conducted? Port and down, of course, and so you can see why the government were in no hurry to repeat history. Clearly, the Port and Down scientists were pretty formidable. Worrying that Soviets would succeed in creating a deadly V-agent and use it against Britain, they took matters into their own hands, literally. The assistant director, William Laddell, and his colleagues submitted themselves for unauthorized testing. They survived, having exposed themselves to half the lethal amount. When officials discovered the self-experimentation, they were less than impressed. Laddell reportedly argued that he and his staff were at liberty to use their own skin for experiments but it didn't help his cause. The team were deemed a liability and insubordinate. They were banned from experimenting on humans and had to work on pigs instead. By the end of the 1950s, their VX research was taken away and transferred to the apparently more responsible United States. And, well, that turned out not to be the case. We don't know what it is about scientists that work with nerve agents, but, well, in the US, they went and did the exact same thing. The details of VX were passed to Ban M. Sim, director of human research at the Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. He soon began self-experimentation and later progressed to mass human testing. These tests are now the subject of a class action lawsuit brought by the survivors of the thousands of soldiers subjected to the horrific experiments at the facility. At great human cost, the work was successful, and the U.S. began producing huge quantities of VX at a rate of almost 10 tons a day. The scientists involved still defend their actions, notably Colonel S. Ketchum, who published his memoir entitled Chemical Warfare Secrets Almost Forgotten in 2006. He claimed that the research was a reasonable response to the Cold War. They were terrified that the Soviet Union was developing their own V agents and they would get there first. Testing the toxicity and developing mitigation methods was the only defense. The subjects who still suffer nightmares and for the most part are still unsure what was done to them feel there was probably a better way.
While using it, supposedly defensively, on UK and US citizens, VX caused no deaths. Regretfully, its story doesn't end there. The first victims of VX numbered 3,000 in a horrific mass death that left bodies scattered across the hills of Skull Valley, Utah in 1968. Luckily, or not depending on how highly you rate people, the deaths were not humans but sheep. Dugway Proving Ground, a US Army base used for testing chemical and biological weapons, had been working with VX. They used a jet to spray 320 gallons of the nerve agent over barren Dugway ground in a weapons test. The plane carrying the VX malfunctioned and accidentally released the gas at a higher altitude than planned. This caused it to be blown off target and onto the grazing land of the sheep. The Army refused to take responsibility, fearing that they'd have to close the base. However, they did pay $376,685 to Alvin Hatch, the sheep rancher and lent bulldozers for the mass sheep burial, so it's very generous of them. Since then, VX has been used in several attacks against humans. In 1988, the UN found that Cuba had deployed it against insurgents during the Angolan Civil War. They discovered traces of it in soil, water, and plant samples taken from areas where Cuban forces had carried out counterinsurgency operations. Saddam Hussein has also been accused of using VX, particularly in the Halabja chemical attack. He denied the allegations, claiming he'd researched it, but had been unable to produce or weaponize any. However, traces were found on the remnants of warheads. Further, VX attacks took place in 1994. A Japanese cult, Om Shinrikyu, began synthesizing it themselves. They used it on a number of cult members suspected to be spies. This led to the deaths of two men. The most notable murder attributed to VX is that of Kim Jong-nam, half-brother of Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. In 2017, he was traveling through Kuala Lumpur Airport in Malaysia. Two separate women approached him and wiped his face with wet cloths. He reported it to authorities before becoming ill. He died of a seizure in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Initially, VX seemed implausible, as the women hadn't died and would have been exposed to VX fumes from the cloths. However, swabs of his eyes contained the compounds, and authorities were able to put it together. VX can be made by simply mixing two non-fatal substances. If each woman carried a different substance on her cloth, they would not form the deadly nerve agent until mixed together on Kim Jong-nam's face. North Korea maintains a stockpile of VX, and the assassination was allegedly ordered as he was a threat to Kim Jong-un's leadership. The truth about this, though, is unlikely to ever be revealed. North Korea is not the only country who've chosen to hoard vast amounts of the deadly nerve agent. The US, UK, Russia, Syria, and Sudan have all been known to produce and stockpile VX. Fortunately, it's now been categorized as a weapon of mass destruction. This prohibits the production and stockpiling of more than 100 grams per year, with exceptions for research, medical, and pharmaceutical uses. These have a limit of 10 kilograms. Still too high for me to feel comfortable with, but a vast improvement on 10 tons a day. Happily, many countries have now chosen to destroy their stocks of VX. In 1969, the US government cancelled its chemical weapons program and production of the nerve agent. So, how do you destroy tons of a nerve agent so deadly a single drop could kill a person? Well, mostly you burn it, and several incineration plants got to work in 1990. Before that, though, with a name that oozes true American style, the US Army implemented Program Chase, cut holes and sink them. They filled old ships with enormous quantities of chemical weapons, took them out into the sea, and sank them. Even Russia has been destroying their chemical weapons. In 1991, the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program was set up to de-escalate the whole weapons of mass destruction situation. Countries like the US provided financial assistance and support to states in the former Soviet Union to decommission their weapons. This included nuclear, bio biological and chemical weapon stockpiles. In May 2009, the Shachuche Chemical Weapons Decommission Plant opened, tasked with destroying vast quantities of sarin VX. However, cooperation has since broken down, and they're supposedly continuing to work on their own. Hopefully. In other good news, the Chemical Weapons Convention, CWCs, were agreed in 1997, and almost all of the countries holding VX have been destroying it. There's even a monitoring body, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, overseeing the mass chemical disarming of the planet. Unfortunately, North Korea is one of four countries refusing to sign, and the assassination of Kim Jong-nan demonstrate that they have both the ability to produce it and use it. Luckily, VX is difficult to weaponize long distance. Long range missiles wouldn't work as the impact explosion would destroy the compound, so aircraft is the only option. This vastly reduces the likelihood of any intercontinental attacks, which is perhaps not so reassuring for the southern neighbors of North Korea.